Mexicos. I mean, for crying out loud, Filipinos, there's a small, you're going to go to a sari sari store, a little store on the corner, ride the tricycle. You know, instead of walking, that's what we do. There was a time when our grandparents, when they would wash their laundry, it was very physical. Now, washing machine. You got what I'm saying? There was a time when people would go out and walk and, and run, you know, and, and do a lot of activities for their recreation. Now, watch TV. TV has done more harm to our physical bodies than we think because TV is there. Kids no longer play outside. What they do is they watch TV or play video games or surf the internet. That's what they do. But what we need to do is encourage our kids to do that, but you need to do that to, to give them an example of somebody who goes out. Tell someone beside you, move. move. Exercise. Do something. It's very, very important. You want to honor the Lord with your body. Amen? Yeah. You know what? The mo How many of you here are 50 and above? Raise your hand. Can I talk to you for a while? I'm going to challenge you to take those walks. I'm going to challenge you to do something. You know why? Because the moment you hit 50, listen carefully, you lose 1.5% of your, of your muscle mass. 1.5% of your muscle strength if you don't move, if you don't, pr if you don't do something. Now, that's just once a year. Now imagine by the age of 60, you would have lost probably 20% of your muscle strength. By age 70, you would have lost already about 50%. Have you met 70-year-old people who cannot even lift a glass? You know, and, and their bone structure gets affected because they're not moving. They're not exerting their muscles. I've met people who in their 80s are, are able to do so much, walk, travel, because they keep on moving and they've, they've not lost it. Let me go on to number 10. I love this. Everybody say that. Drink water and eat water-rich food. Amen? I've, 14 years ago, I made a decision that I'll be semi-vegetarian. I, I, I have, for the past 14 years, I've not eaten uh, beef, chicken, pork, uh, you know, crabs, shrimps. I've just made that decision. I eat fish and, and uh, vegetables. And I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still normal. And, and the reason why I've done it was just made the decision to, to become healthier. Here's the funny thing. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, there were a lot of animals that were prohibited from being eaten. D Daniel chapter 1, let's read. Please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food. So royal food would be meat. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. It's in the Bible. And here's step number 11, reduce emotional and physical toxins. Leviticus 11 verse 2 says, these are the animals which you may eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. You know what? Why were there in the Old Testament some animals that you were not supposed to eat? Oink, oink and uh, crustaceans, crabs, shrimps, fish without scales you're not supposed to eat, according to the Old Testament. In the New Testament, all, all, all bands have been lifted and we can eat anything. But you would wonder why. There's a group of, of doctors who have studied all these animals that were prohibited and they found out that they, all these animals, have more toxins than the others. For example, crustaceans, shrimp, and crabs are the scavengers of the sea and so they have more toxins. Fish without scales have more toxins because it is through the scales where the toxins go out of the fish. So if you don't have scales, you have more toxins. So this group of doctors, they were saying, maybe one of the reasons why, God, uh, why, why it's in the Bible. You know what? I'm not saying stop eating pork. I'm not saying that. But maybe you can minimize. And step number 12. Step number 12 is keep medical invasiveness to a minimum. Say that with me. Sirach 38 talks about how a doctor and medicine are blessings from God. Do you agree with the Bible? I believe that. I believe doctors and medicines are a gift from God. And we need to listen to them. We need to allow them to bless us. But at the same time, I want you to make that choice that if there is, you know, between invasive and non-invasive, 
then try, try, if possible. I mean, there are times when you can't, you've got to get the invasive thing. But if the non-invasive is available and it can be done, then do it. You've got a headache. I mean, instead of popping a pill, you've got a headache, you know, pop a pill. But how about the other option? Removing stress from your life, exercising more, changing your diet, and then maybe it will solve your headache permanently instead of keep up popping pills. You got what I'm saying? No, you didn't. Are you get what I'm saying? There, you know, you've got, you've, got, you've got ulcers. Now, there are times, I, I remember I had an ulcer. I had an ulcer some years ago, and I, the doctor told me to drink this thing that would, that would uh, decrease the, the acid in my, in my, in my intestines, and, and that really helped a lot. But then, as I was taking that medicine, I, ha I had to ask myself the question, why do I have ulcers? You know, and I found out why. It's the stress. I was allowing it to creep into my life. Now I'm able to manage my stress so much more, and I had to learn the hard way. You know, when pain, is, is in your body, it is a messenger. Pain is a messenger telling you, do something, there's something wrong, you've got to act. And sometimes what we do is we remove the pain, we shoot the messenger, we kill the messenger and say, no, no pain, you know? We, we drink a pain, you got what I'm saying? What you do is you listen to the pain and you say, okay, I've got to do something. Amen? I'd like to end this talk with a story of a friend of mine his name is Willie Enriquez. And Willie Enriquez is someone who had a rare kidney disease. And I cannot even mention the name. It's, it's, such a, it's such a difficult thing to pronounce. But I searched it in the internet, and true enough, I saw permanent kidney failure. In fact, it was so bad. It was so bad. Willie talked to his doctor and said, Doc, what's, what's my, you know, like, I mean, do I have a time frame here? Will I die when? And the doctor shook his head and said, you know, Willie, maswerte ka na kung buhay ka pa after six months. Th those were the exact words. You will be lucky if you're still alive, if you're still around after six months. And, and that shook Willie so much. He said, my gosh, I've got six months to live or five months to live or four months to live or three months to live. He, he prayed. He was, he was a man who serves the Lord and, and attends prayer meetings. You know, he prayed and prayed. He asked me for prayer. He asked prayer from so many people. And then he changed his lifestyle. From someone who did not move, he started exercising every single day. You won't believe this, but he was telling me, you know what? After office, I go to the gym, play badminton for three hours, sometimes four hours, every single day. I sweated out my toxins. I just said, I'm going to move. And you know what? One of the great things he did was he played with his wife every day. You know, there was, you know from, 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 from not being with his wife, now he was with his wife every day. And then he brought his kids along, three children. They played every day. The doctor told him he had six months to live. Two years ago he's he's now a walking miracle and the doctors cannot explain it the doctors cannot explain it they said there is no known cure for your disease and when we give you medicines it's just to slow down slow down the rise of creatinine you know slow down the progress of your disease but his disease is actually reversing his disease is actually going back and they don't know why I know why you know why. We have more power than we think we have over our bodies. Amen? Amen? And, and you know, I, I really believe that. I remember I, I shared you this story a long time ago. Uh, I'll share it to you again. There was this guy. He had palpitations. He goes to the doctor. And this is a true story. You know, he says, Doc, you know, you know can you examine? Went through some exam battery of tests. And then the doctor told, tells him, you've got a galloping rhythm in your heart. Okay? And so this guy says, wow, thanks, doc. And so the, the, the doctor says, come back to me after, after, you know, I don't know what, two weeks or one month. I don't know what the doctor said. So he, he left. After, after two weeks or one month, he came back to the doctor, went through the tests again, and the doctor said, are, are you the same guy who came here two weeks ago? And, and, and he said, why, doc? Your heart is perfect. And, and the guy said, yeah, that's what you told me two weeks ago that my heart was perfect. I said, no. I said, you had a galloping rhythm. And the man said, yeah, galloping rhythm. My heart is as strong as a horse. <laughs> and the doctor said, no, galloping rhythm means your, your heart was sick. 
He did not understand. He thought the doctor was telling him his heart was perfect. And you know what? Words are so powerful. He believed in it. My w- oh. And his heart responded. You got what I'm saying? I have a friend who went to a healing mass. Even if he was a skeptic. He went, he went to mass, healing mass, because his wife pulled him there. But, but he did not like, really believe that anything will happen in a healing mass. He had a tumor. He had a tumor in his kidney. But you know what? Two days after, he goes to the doctor. The tumors vanished completely. No tumors whatsoever were found after the healing mass. Now here's, here's something that came to my mind. That guy, he was a skeptic. He's not even attending prayer meetings. But you know, that's the power of God. The power of God is available to you. And I want you to believe that you've got more power than you think you have over your body. And let's pray for healing today. The same power that healed Willie Enriquez, the same power that healed my friend who had a tumor, the same power that healed this woman I prayed for years ago. She had cancer of the, of the, in the reproductive system and, and the doctors told her she had six months to live. I saw her five years later and she was alive. You know, the same power that healed her, the same power that healed uh, the blind men and the lame men during the time of Jesus is here in our midst. And God can heal you. Amen?